Among the most essential characters, Elizabeth Lucas and Nathan are probably the ones who have endured the most. That doesn't imply, however, that some others didn't receive well-written and in-character storylines. The best TV characters, in my opinion, are those that go through significant arcs. It doesn't matter if they are nice or bad individuals in the given situation. What counts is the quality of writing. Henry Gowan is a figure that has gone from being an obvious antagonist to becoming Goldie's godfather. Goldie is the daughter of Lee and Rosemary Coulter, the most reliable couple in Hope Valley. The character shifts with each new season. Though it's not really dramatic, Henry develops in some way. Exploration of the guy he is is made possible by everything he goes through, which is difficult in a performance with such a large cast. Henry's incapacity to forgive himself for his involvement in the mine accident has been a recurring theme in his tale. Who will be the next governor? Lucas Bouchard? In addition to revealing the election results, the When Calls the Heart season 10 finale included some unexpected turns. Hope Valley is not without turmoil. Following a sad split in the most recent episode of When Calls the Heart, further shocking turns are revealed in the season 10 final, paving the way for an intriguing season 11. But first, there's Goldie's Baptism, which offers one of the most enduring characters on the show a chance to shine, and that major election that could affect the future of the town. Three weeks have passed since Elizabeth and Lucas's train platform separation as Starry Nights opens. Since then, he has been out of town actively fighting to keep Pope Valley safe and remove the dishonest governor, Bixby Balfour. However, there are recollections of him everywhere, along with campaign posters. By now, everyone knows that Lucas and Elizabeth called off their engagement, and Elizabeth is cautious around anyone who could bring up her ex fiance She assures Rosemary, though, that all is well. Yes, the day of the election also happens to be her wedding anniversary. However, she isn't thinking about the past. Instead, she is concentrated on ensuring Lucas wins the election. She's also content with her decision to call it quits on the romance, while also giving the Mountie office a serious look. Naturally, Rosemary is spearheading Lucas's attempt to encourage people to cast their ballots. On election day, she and Elizabeth are manning the polls and voter turnout is strong. But Rosemary takes action locating the slackers and encouraging them to cast a ballot after learning that 20 people had neglected to fulfill their civic obligation. That proves to be a wise decision. Lucas prevails in the election, but only by a narrow margin of 21 votes. Lucas, who appears on screen very infrequently in this episode, has been elected governor. However, even with his win, there can be more problems at head. As he exits his campaign headquarters, he is approached by someone. Why are you in this place? asks Lucas. Although their name is kept a secret, we have a suspicion that they are up to no good. Lee has the responsibility of planning their daughter, Goldie's baptism, while Rosemary is away for the election. Elizabeth has already been chosen to be their godmother. The godfather selection, however, is less clear-cut until Lee offers an unexpected recommendation. Henry Gowan, in his opinion, is the ideal option. Rosemary is dubious, but Lee makes the point that he's become wiser as a result of his many problems. Furthermore, we are aware that children, Goldie in particular, bring out Henry's softer side. Rosemary remarks, maybe he needs Goldie just as much as she needs him. It won't be simple to persuade Henry to be their daughter's godfather, though. It is difficult for him to imagine helping to raise someone else's child because he has spent so much time criticizing himself for his errors. In addition, he admits to Lee that he knows very nothing about God or fatherhood. He only decides to step up though he arrives to the church a few minutes late for the major event, after speaking with Elizabeth, who serves as a reminder of the power of forgiveness. Henry's lengthy redemption story, which began with him as Hope Valley's biggest evil, is coming to a close. Therefore, it makes perfect sense that he reaches out to one of the first individuals to recognize him as more than simply a villain to wrap up this episode. After years in the dark, Henry tells Elizabeth that Abigail Stanton helped him see beauty once more. She claims that Abigail would truly value him for who he is at this moment. Henry makes the decision to see her in order to learn more, as evidenced by the way he approaches her home and greets the unidentified person when she answers. Fans of Lori Loughlin's Abigail character from When Calls the Heart have long wished to see her return to Hope Valley. She may not return to the show after this sequence. Hallmark has already declared they won't collaborate with Loughlin once more. But it serves as just more reminder that, in the world of the show, she still exists. In this episode as well, Mike unintentionally stands Mai up for their date due to the turmoil of election day, which throws Mike and Mai's new romance for a loop. It makes sense that she is unhappy, 
saying she is sick of mixed messages. However, Faith and Fiona implore her to give him another chance and be honest with Mike about her feelings. Mike receives the same counsel from Fiona, and as a result, both of them simultaneously admit their admiration for one another. In the meantime, Bill's quasi-romance with Madeline comes to a satisfactory conclusion. He informs the Mountie that he is living the life of a bachelor during a conversation with Nathan. For me, it's the life of a father, Nathan responds, but on election night, Madeline appears. She says, I know I can't expect you to forgive me for what I did. However, she wants him to understand how important Hope Valley is to her and his significance to her. Although Bill's response is hidden from view, we have a sneaking suspicion that he may not be as dedicated to living alone as he says, particularly in light of Madeline's recent gesture of reconciliation. Now that Elizabeth is back on her own and Lucas is out of the picture, attention is focused on Nathan, the other member of the contentious love triangle and when calls the heart. Last week, when it appeared like Elizabeth might be heading out of Hope Valley, Nathan boldly approached her and asked her what she wanted. She dismissed him. However, it was just one of several talks that made her think about what her heart was saying her, which ultimately resulted in her breaking up with Lucas. Even while Nathan might still harbor feelings for the woman who turned him down in season 8, Elizabeth isn't necessarily leaping into his arms just because she is single. First things first, the engagement must be forgotten. In addition, there is the election to consider. However, Nathan is also avoiding Elizabeth by occupying himself with Mountie-related tasks that allow him to leave Hope Valley conveniently. In Story Nights, Nathan and Elizabeth eventually cross paths, but it's not quite cozy. He gets to vote right before the polls close. Elizabeth is by herself at the voting place. She confronts Nathan for avoiding her when they are both in the voting booth and she is on the other side of the curtain. She recognizes that he was attempting to assist, but he apologizes for going too far during that heated exchange at the school. Nathan gives that a tiny half smile. He exits the polling place. Nathan tells Elizabeth good night, but it's obvious that she's hoping for more. Elizabeth may have concluded that Lucas wasn't the right man for her. Regarding why she was drawn to him in the first place and what it implies for her going forward, she still has a lot to work out. Hope Valley could use some therapists. The moment she pays a visit to her late husband Jack's cemetery gives us the best idea of how she is feeling. She says, you were my great love. However, something inside of me just broke when I lost you. The idea of experiencing that once more, I guess I was searching for something secure so I wouldn't be harmed again even if I loved Lucas. She continues, that wasn't fair to Lucas. We are worthy of a wonderful love, both of us do. Elizabeth must be willing to risk being harmed if she hopes to discover love once more, whether it be with Nathan or someone else. She must embrace the possibility of experiencing another loss in order to open her heart. A second Elizabeth-Nathan encounter, which as two viewers will note occurs in the same location as the Mountie confessed his love to her in season eight closes the wind calls the heart season 10 final. Nathan rides up to where she's sitting on a log by herself. She asks, what are you doing here? I'm not sure, he answers. Why are you in this place? Elizabeth seemed to be about to confess her love for Nathan based on all the indicators. Is there a kiss at the end of this episode? Unfortunately, the response is no for teen Nathan viewers. Bill rides up before Elizabeth has a chance to speak what's on her mind. It is Lucas, he says. I need both of you right now. We were aware that Balfour had a number of influential and dishonest individuals on his side. Additionally, Montego alluded to the fact that Lucas's challenge to the governor last week was a riskier move than he had thought. Our best assumption is that Lucas was approached outside the campaign headquarters by Montague or one of his goons. It looks like Lucas could be in grave danger right now. The episode of When Calls the Heart finishes on a cliffhanger, which is unusual. Not only are Elizabeth and Nathan's fates left unresolved, but the circumstances surrounding Lucas are also left vague. It would be interesting to watch how Elizabeth responds to the possibility that her ex-fiance is in danger when the show returns for season 11. Would it arouse some resentment? And would it alter her perception of what constitutes a safe love decision? Given the vibes we're getting from Elizabeth and Nathan, that seems improbable. However, considering some of the shocking revelations in season 10, anything is feasible.